Mr. Magic. Yes, sir. We usually kick off our interviews with the two claps and a Ric Flair, but since you are the GOAT MC Magic, can we do two claps and a zzzz? Let's do it. <laughs> All right? Let's All right, do it. everybody? Like it. Oh, God. 12 year old Anthony, this is happening. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here we go. Two claps and a zzzz. Three, two, one. It's the Dana Cortez Show. Welcome to the Dana Cortez Show. Awesome. Magic, I've known you for years and years. Thank you for taking the time to come and, and talk to all of us. We're yes, like, thank you. We're we know so, you're a busy man. I know you are busy, and that's kind of where I wanted to go from jump. Like You've been able to travel and do new music and maintain this huge fan base for years and years. For decades at this point. Decades. How, how, have, you, how have you managed to do that? A lot of work. A lot of work. That's one thing that uh, I think a lot of people don't realize um, is that it takes a lot of work to get a good paycheck. You feel me? And I'm so, tired. I know that. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm tired right now. Yeah, and so that's what it's been. It's been a lot of work and uh, uh, and loving what, what what I do. I love this music. I love these love songs. You know, music changes, but you got to stay true to who you are, and that's what I love. And I think that's why people continue to follow you. Not many people are able to make new music you kind of have to live off the the stuff and there's nothing wrong with it i love the older stuff i love that you still perform your classics as well but you're making new music and not many artists are able to do that and continue reinventing themselves every time i go to a show we were just hosting one it's young people you know people in the middle older you got them all ages when i started my average fan was 14 and today my average fan is about 16. i was That's gonna say that i was talking to this kid yesterday and i told him that you're coming in today and he was introduced to your music through his parents, but he's like, he's literally my favorite rapper. He's my favorite musician. And I was thinking, I was like, man, this guy's 19 years old, and he's been, he's literally younger than you've been doing your music for. That's such a compliment, you know? I, I take that with a lot of love, and, and, and I just chalk it up to you being real, being real to who I am, um, from MBK to MB Riders to Magic City. That's real. That's exactly and what it is. Is that what you're crediting it to, Magic? Is you just being authentically you? Because one thing that's impressive to me about your career is that we mentioned over 20 years in the business, but there's been so many changes to the music business, right? Yeah. Like, right. You were one of very few artists, in my opinion, who've been able to absorb the social media impact with your career. A lot Dude, of people take were- Take it with you to another yeah. level. Well, you've been going live for over 10 years. No, I think I started going live Maybe on, yeah, you're right. It it has been. Wow! Wow! I remember when you were doing He's it, like, when you first doing it, I was like, "Well, there was, was like, a little. Oh, that's a good idea." There was a little app called a live stream, and yeah, I think yeah, yeah. we did a live stream. We when did it. We did an interview together. Yes, that that, that has been that many that many years. But uh, you know, my fans told me, "Why don't you go live?" And I'm like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, wow. I'll do it. You're so like, a lot of times, is it, it your fans making these suggestions? Absolutely, that's amazing. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take you guys back. I didn't like Facebook because MySpace was so good to me. You know, like my 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 music player had like a hundred million plays already. Oh my I'm gosh! Like, you know, and of course, Imagine you weren't getting paid for it back then. Right? And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tom. So I'm like, I don't want to go to Facebook. I gotta start all over. And a fan of mine started my my page. She goes, I know you don't want to do it, but I'm gonna do it for you. And now my Facebook is like a 1.4 million. She started it. Thank goodness for her. Yeah. And thank goodness for the fans forcing change because that's one thing I can promise you. Whether you're doing this kind of work or any work, change is inevitable. You better move with it. I got to give her a shout out now that I said that. You better. <laughs> Yaritza, I love you. I, I call her Yarichula. I met her I met her uh, at one of my concerts and she's, I mean, to this day, if I say Yaritza, she went to graphic design school, I say, I need a quick flyer. She'll get it done in like two hours. She's still a number one. Love. We, we, love right we talked about your fans and having, a, you know, you get a lot of love. Does it scare you to speak from your heart when it comes to politics, the state of immigration? I know, you know, uh, naciste de Mexico, you know, you're born in Mexico. Does it frighten you that you'll turn off some people? Because I know you're very passionate Amen. about your views and you do not hide it. But does it, do sometimes people tell you, hey, dude, step back. That's not your world. And how do you how do you maintain your integrity without hurting feelings or do you not care you know you can't please everybody all the time and if they if they flee they were never real fans anyway okay if my personal views are hurting your feelings then we're on the opposite sides of the fence so why are we even riding together okay you see what i'm saying um and 
uh, I think there's a lot of injustice in politics. There's a lot of injustice uh, in the criminal system. There's a lot of injustice uh, in the courts. Um, and, and just in general, how like like President Trump goes in forgiving all these racist white men, just pardoning them. I just said that. For no reason. Just pardons them. He came and, you know, like Sheriff Joe was incriminated here in town for for uh, racial discrimination. In Phoenix, Arizona. In Phoenix. In Phoenix. And Trump came to town and says, let me pardon that guy. He's one of them. So he's really, by his actions, telling us, you're not white, you're not elite, you're not with us, and you're going to follow by our rules. Some people will say, well, look what he's done for, you know, Alice Johnson. He's he's freed some people, but I understand what you're saying. That's almost done to appease. Well, look what he did. Just shut up. You should just be satisfied with this. Alice Johnson is a cupcake in a bakery. I agree, and I, I'm so glad she's free. I I, yes. I, I stand with her. I'm, yes. I'm glad. And she but there's should... a lot more people that need to be looked at cases. There's there's black and brown men and women mm-hmm. behind bars that don't deserve that. Not time. only this, let me tell you that the Mexican population has been, uh, um, what is, what, when, what, when you, um, assassination of character. Demonized. By himself, he has assassinated the character of any Mexican simply by the amount of media that he negative media that he has sent towards our people i don't like that i don't like that you know and you know jesus christ died because he was truthful i'm gonna be truthful i like that i like that you're not afraid to take a stand you're a motivational figure amongst a lot of mexican americans in this country and while we're on the topic, what advice do you have to any young Mexican Americans looking to progress in Trump's America? You're the dream. You came here. Your parents immigrated here. You were born in Mexico. You're the dream. You made it. What's that advice? The the advice is this, guys. The number one thing that hurts us, our people, is partying. People think, oh. people think, yo, let me just get high once and then become addicted to getting high and forget about their career. You know what I'm saying? And so your mom tells you, no andes haciendo esas tonterías, cabrón. You know what she means when she says, no andes Don't be doing that stupid Don't stuff. Don't be doing that stupid stuff. And it is stupid. I, I have personal family members that have ruined their entire life because they wanted to go get drunk once. I've never and been then, drunk or high in my life. So f- first of all, life is a marathon. And that's one of the f- first hurdles is, is partying and getting drunk and, you know, doing all that stuff. If you can get over that hurdle, a lot of people don't get over that hurdle yeah, no, because right. a lot of people work 40 hours for one reason, so they can party Friday, Saturday, and you throw Sunday. throw it all away throw and you it broke all again on Monday. And restart the cycle. Repeat and r- rinse and repeat, right? And so that's one of the main things that I want to tell young people. Don't fall victim to the things that got your uncle locked up, to the things that got your mom and dad broke up, to the to the alcohol problems that, you know, that, that really just... That have plagued our communities. Exactly. It's like a plague, but, but uh, you know... But, I think that's every community. Uh, that is, it, but it's not every community because you go to the wealthy communities, you don't see liquor stores on the corner. You go to the barrios... And people that, that live in certain areas of the yeah, community. Yeah, you can't get a 40-ounce uh, downtown no, Scottsdale. But you can. <laughs> in the barrio, you can in certain communities and, that are impoverished. So those are what you say to politics, the laws, and why are is, they allowed there this and This is not for ourselves, for yourself. You got It's got to come from, you know, the, from another the ground Another area up. where a lot of that, what your theory comes to play too, is coping. A lot of young Latinos and Mexican-Americans use these substances to cope with. I don't like excuses, bro. I'm with you, and I do understand that, but it it also is that you become what you're shown. Um, We can say anything to our kids, but if we aren't doing it, unfortunately, you have to lead by example. It's up to parents. Yeah. And I don't like the excuses, but unfortunately, if you are, you know, I was a very young mom. I made a lot of stupid decisions when I was young. You know, at 15, what do you know? Not a lot. And unfortunately, I showed my oldest daughter some stupid things and she made some stupid mistakes because I, that's what I showed her. Yeah. And so you have to lead by example and live that life. My Is kids that- will tell you the same thing that I'm saying. My kids, I have a 21, uh, 23 and a 32. They'll tell you the same thing that you, because have I raised them. them by example. I said, do as I do, do as I do instead of do as I say. Right. And, and most people, most people say, you know, do as I say, I uh, which advice. is hypocritical. Well, it is because you can't live a certain way and expect your children to do something different. They're going to see them, but like this, you're showing me. Hey, haven't we, haven't we said that action speaks louder than words? Is it true or not? 
It's true. It is true. It's absolutely true. So are you somebody who goes out and votes? Are you in your... Absolutely. And, okay, so you do. Because some people will say, well, I'll, I'll preach, but I'm not going to vote. No, no. I, I have to go out and vote. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be a U.S. citizen if it wasn't for voting. What, what, okay. And explain. let me explain that, that yeah. to you. Uh, all my life, I've been a hustler. You know, all my life, I've been able to plant seeds, grow trees, and make money. You know, and I don't mean marijuana. I'm talking about plant seeds of hard work. I'm talking about things that, that actually Fruits become Fruits for fruitful. your family. Songs that become le legendary songs. Plant the seed and becomes a tree. So, all my life. And so, I've never had to apply for jobs. So, I really never needed to be a U.S. citizen. Oh, I see. You know, you're right. You were born in Mexico. Right. We just were coming all the way back. Yeah. Full circle. The, to the reason you need to be a U.S. citizen, U.S. citizen, so you can get a job. I've never been a job type of guy. I've been the type of guy that a hustle, make it happen. You know, turn scratch into skrill. You see what I'm saying? Well, you got jobs, but you work for yourself. Yeah, I made my jobs. Yeah. So nobody said, you know, let me see your documentation before <laughs> you get your paycheck, buddy. It just that wasn't me. That wasn't me. And so, all my life I was making it, and I think I was I was already 35 years old. You know, something like that. And I was at a at a at a rally encouraging people to whatever because <laughs> one of my political friends invited me and she's like you know make sure that you get your vote and i'm like i can't vote Marty. and she's like why because i'm not a u.s citizen she goes what mc magic is not a u.s citizen and i'm like no she goes we're gonna get that taken care of and she did all the paperwork for me wow Marty, at congressman ended up costing you though about a thousand bucks okay you know, it was back then it wasn't it wasn't as hard as it is today. The line wasn't as long. I don't know. Maybe Mari had some magical connection, but Mari at Congressman Ed Pastor's office, she said, "I'm going to take care of it for you. You just got to pay the fees and show up when you got to show up." I went to my situation and became a U.S. citizen, but I I thought I didn't need it because I didn't need it. But you do need it. But I do need. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a U.S. citizen now. I'm proud. Well, for all the U.S. citizens, you don't got to go through nothing. Y'all better register and vote. Absolutely, you guys got to got to vote. Uh, you Especially know, make a difference. Around. Even though I truly believe, even if you vote, I truly believe it's still fudged. They're still, you know, uh, you know, um, what are you calling fixing and they manipulate. They like manipulate. The vote. But you know, here's another thing. You just said it's got to be us, right? Our communities. Our communities don't come out in droves to vote. You know why these politicians listen to the guys with money? Because they're controlling their job. If we come out in droves to vote, then we're in control. But we don't. We don't do that. So once the the, the person with the most votes mm -hmm. controls the situation, controls the politics. The Latino vote is strong, and it was it was strongest, I think, when Obama came in office. Yes, it was. And then we lost faith in the system, uh, which is easy to do because the system is broken, and the system is a lie. It's up to us to fix it. Though. You know what I'm saying? We got to get more people from the ground up in those positions of power yeah and there's people in the system that can't stand it like like megan markle and her her deal that obviously that's the uk but they like oh, we don't want to be part of this trash no more we don't want to be part of it no more it's you got to walk away yeah and they're, and they're billionaires god i would never walk away from that <laughs> that's what you think <laughs> true i guess that's right. what you think you don't get judged daily uh and and megan being uh African American, African, African American, American, you know, or at least half. Being half African American, she was judged daily at breakfast, at lunch, Just at dinner. For the color of her skin. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's wild. And I tell my, I tell my manager, he's black. I tell my manager, you know, Big D's been my manager for sixteen years now. I tell him, everyone's racist. I says everyone is racist because if you weren't racist, you wouldn't be proud of who you are. So just just a simple fact that you're proud of who you are means that you think a little less of some of, of the other races. And I think everyone is a little racist, even if it's not big, loud, blatant. I think everyone is or a little racist. Or angry and dangerous. And this is the, the example that I use. I tell them, every time we watch a boxing match and there's a, there's a, there's a, a Latino and a black, he goes for the black, I go for the <laughs> Latino. And it never changes. It never changes. You know, and is he it laughs. Okay it's almost like it's built into you, right? Well, it's built in. It's yeah. human nature. I think what, what he's saying is right. It is human nature. But as long as you're not trying to belittle another race and call someone an animal or my race is superior it's different there are people who want to hurt people Maybe just for the I'm color of their skin because i grew up around all hispanics and I will, i'll find myself in like a situation like that and i'll be like oh i'm gonna root for the mexican dude because that's what, that's what i'm used to because <laughs> that's, that's what you grew my, up my, with my so you're like miklo uh, you're like miklo <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know like that but yeah you uh, know miklo is right yeah of course yes Blood in, blood out. Because, I mean, because in, in him, in him, in his thread, he was he was Chicano. He was a Mexican. He was Chicano. That's what he grew he up. He was around. One, one of the essays, not one of the gringos, but he looked like a gringo. That's crazy. You're basically an essay automatic. 
Yeah. <laughs> if he says I am, I guess I am. If MC Magic calls you an essay, you're an essay, bro. That's it. That. You should wear a sweatshirt that says I'm an essay. Yeah. You, you, MC you Magic get a, said so. You invited to the Matanza. <laughs> You've been invited Speaking for a minute. things we're being invited to. Super show. Man. Hello. Things How we love big is to. this? Because I keep hearing, Dana, it's wild. Last year, there was 30,000 people. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so, my yeah. God. Yeah, What's your favorite people. part? Obviously, you perform. Obviously, the performances are incredible. You love the crowd. But, like, just the show itself, what's your favorite part of attending? My favorite part is it's still run by brown people. Hmm. I like Talk that. Because it. it's Lowrider Magazine. all that merch. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Magazine. Yeah. You know, my homie's over there um, working hard at the Arizona Super Show, DJ Mad Rich. Um, and, and everybody does just work so hard. And it's still our people's holiday. It's our people's holiday. And, and here's another thing. I'm real proud to be Chicano. Even though I was born in Mexico, I connect more with the Chicano culture. Because well, you were little. How old were you when you came here? Five. Yeah, so, I mean. Like five. And because I ex- I was really I was really like, I'm Mexican, I'm Mexican. And I went to Mexico, and they treated me like like I was a gringo. And they even called me a gringo. And I'm like, really? I, I'm really a Chicano. <laughs> I'm really are. a Chicano. Because, you know, and, and a lot of people don't like to be called Chicano, but that's my favorite term because it classifies a certain audience, a certain culture, a certain music, a certain style of living. And I think Chicano culture is a beautiful culture. Well, some of the Chicanos, but we, we're here in America and, and there's just a different way mm-hmm. that we absorb things. Music, our culture is different. Our food is a little Absolutely. bit different. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. And the Lowrider Super thing. Show is a Chicano holiday. It's a Chicano holiday. Yes. Man, all right, so biggest that's, song. That's why I'm so proud to be a part of that. I've been I've been a part of the Super Show since like 1995, six. And it's been rolling that hard since every then? Every year? Every year, every Damn. year. I mean, there have been a few years where they didn't book me to perform, but you know. You're a part of it. Yeah, still, still a part of it. Yeah. What's the biggest song when you perform by far in almost every city? What's the biggest reaction you get from people? Lost in Love. Lost, oh yeah lost in love is f- amazing but the thing is that i'm glad that i'm not a one hit wonder you know what yes. i'm saying because there's some people say lost in love others say pretty girl others say so fly girl i love you more than anything you wanna, you wanna this show us a little bit of world that? oh the keyboard's not set up dana oh, oh, you're gonna have to get at the super show writing. yeah we have to edit that in if you want yeah. 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 to do all that i got a question about your performance i've been fortunate enough to see you perform a few times and you are amazing when it comes to distributing roses to your female audience. Thank you. Thank now, you. I've seen some artists who weren't as smooth as you. Mm. Do you have any tips for those artists when it comes to passing out roses to your <laughs> family? Yeah, yeah. Just let Magic do that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with the super fans? Because I know you got some girls Dude. that are crazy about you. Yeah, but you know, it's all love. Everybody, uh, all my fans know that I'm married. All my fans, you know, you, you see you see my wife here and there with me. Kiki's She's all, with you all Kiki's the time. Kiki's a shy, a shy girl. She does not want to be seen. When fans ask her to take a picture with us, she's like, she gets nervous. She doesn't, she's a real, she's the opposite of me. Right. And and that's, I think, that's why we're so perfect together. How you long have you been married now? Uh, this year will be our 25th year. Con- oh, wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for coming in. Do you remember the first time you met Anthony? It was his first night on the air. I do. I do. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was in Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. First yeah. time we had ever. a good time too. It was a great time. Well, you ran my whole show. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was so lucky well, you were there. Wait, he hold didn't on. Know what he was doing. Hold on, time on. We, got, we can't let him off the hook though, because you always put this pressure on automatic. You said your twenty fifth anniversary is coming up. Amen. What do you have planned? You know what? We plan to go back to uh, to Rome and to renew our vows at the Vatican. Oh. You got married in Rome. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. We've been traveling okay. to different places, and she wanted to go do the the renewal of the vows. But mm-hmm. when you go to some place like that, you know, a church, whether it's in, whether it's in uh, in in Jerusalem or in or in Rome, uh, you have to bring your own priest. Oh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do that kind of stuff, because the ones that are there, uh, they've already got their schedule filled They're up. They're busy. You know? And so we, uh, fortunately, we have priests that are that are friends of ours and Kiki's been trying to book you know the, the right time <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. trying to get someone that's going to travel with us and go and remarry us there we might just re- end up redoing it here pay but attention yeah auto take yeah. these notes no, automatic I can't get a date night I got and you taking Magic your wife bunny, to I'm Vatican <laughs> no I can't get a date night and she's taking his, he's taking his wife to the Vatican to her new house <laughs> listen Otto it comes with time we've been we've, we, we've been we've been married 25 oh, years but I haven't been the but I haven't been the best husband always so do you do date nights? Uh, 
we we're, we're together every day. See, that's what I always tell her. We're literally together all the time. We're we together travel together all the time. We're always together. I was like, we're on a date all the time. All yeah. Right. Matter of fact, if you guys have one meal together a day, you're already on a date. Okay. <laughs> this is over. <laughs> Even if you're cooking. So the super shows. <laughs> no, it, it can't be over, Dana. I mean, like like say for example, I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, I had to work on Valentine's Day. And I just didn't get around to ordering roses for Kiki. I was like, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. I think I took her out and bought her some clothes and some shoes, but I didn't get her roses. I'll end up bringing her roses today. Well, just Valentine, because. Just because, yeah. But I'm that type of person that I'll be romantic any day of the year. Like, like on Christmas, we don't exchange gifts anymore. Really? We don't exchange gifts anymore because we don't either. I don't want either. my I want my kids to know that it's not Same. about that. Yeah, right. That's what we, you know? We, we love each other yeah. regardless. It's and and, and family, we're other. healthy. Yeah. We got a root and that sounds real cliche, but it's true. Like I grew up very humble. You know, and so like having I was so emotional. We have a house, we've got you know, it, it's simple things that yes. make me happy. It's not these big extravagant I used to think that though. When mm -hmm. I first started and I and I sold a house and I made a little money, I would spend it on stupid things. And it still wouldn't make me happy. I had to come to the realization that's You got to be happy with yourself. Yeah, that's not where happiness comes from. It comes from right here. Yeah. Yeah. Even a, a nice house is real dope, though. <laughs> a nice house is I real dope. you got a nice new house. We actually did. We just bought a new house. And we've been waiting a long time, you know, because in the crash of 08, or wherever it was. Yeah. 08, 07. Yeah, it was 08, yeah. I think we ended up crashing about 10 uh, so because we tried to ride it out for so long. And I had one of those fluctu fluctuating situations. Oh, yeah. Same. So my, my yeah. house payment kept going up and kept going up and kept going up and kept going up. Finally, when we reached about $5,800 a month, I was like, you know what? I'm going to let this thing go. Yeah. yeah I, did a, I, did, I didn't lose it. I did a short sale on it. That's yeah. what we did. Too. And then we got out of it. And then so we just waited. And my mentality was I don't trust the finance industry anymore. And I said, my next house, I'm going to buy it cash. And so that's what I started doing, working hard on just what building a blessing. up, you know? What a blessing. Congratulations. Thank you for taking the time to come in. God bless you too, Dana. I'm proud of you and everything you've Thank done. You so much. I, I wish you that. the best. I knew Dana when she was a thick girl. <laughs> You yes, really did. You and that and that was and a long so time. Ago. A lot and of people, people don't realize that's, that. Yeah. That's really what he's congratulating her on right now is mainly the weight loss and everything else is just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are doing amazing. I'm proud of you, and you know I participate in your online polls every once in a yes. while when I'm there, and I let people know. You know, si no te gusta a la madre. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the part of the story. MC Magic, Dana Cortez Show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I love you, baby. It's the Dana Cortez Show. <laughs>